Hey and howdy everyone, it's Jeannie with Paper Pixie Ink. Welcome back to my channel. Uh, today I'm actually going to do something a little bit different. Uh, I am redoing a tutorial that I had done a while back on a pop-up component for an album. Um, it was an old video and I've had some questions recently uh, regarding it and so I thought I would remake it in a more clear and concise manner in a couple of different sizes than what I had originally showed you. So let's dive in. Okay, so I am going to make this one here. I will link the video. It is, it's a fairly simplistic one and it is relatively easy to modify the size of it for really any application. It gets a little bit more complicated as it gets bigger just because it needs to be more solid. So I'm going to start by making an 8x8 eight eight one. So I've already gone ahead and cut my pieces just to save us a little bit of time and effort. Uh, so I'm using 65 pound cardstock for the components themselves. And then I am using, this is 110 pound cardstock and I am using this just for the folding piece of the component. Uh, because that's going to be what takes all of the extra wear and tear and so I want them to be a little bit more solid. So because we're making this size is an 8x8, eight eight, uh, I am using two pieces of cardstock. One I have cut to 8x8, eight eight, one I have cut to 8x8.5. Eight eight so the one that I've cut to 8x8.5, eight eight I'm just going to lay it down on my scoreboard with the top part across the top at the eight and a half. So it's eight and a half inches across this way and we are going to be scoring it at the eight inch mark down. So that when we fold on the score line and attach these two pieces together, we're left with an eight by eight piece. So the next thing that we're going to do is I am going to take two, my two pieces of 110 pound cardstock. Now both of these are cut to nine inches by one and a half inches and we're going to score them the same way. They're just going to be reversed for one side versus the other. So with the one and a half inch side along the top, so we're scoring along the long side, uh, we are going to score at the one inch mark. You're going to want to make sure that you get a good score along that. And we're going to do that exact same thing with our second piece. Oops. So we're going to put this aside for the time being. And I am going to do a couple of things with these pieces. So I'm going to take a ruler. Um, it doesn't really matter as long as it has a couple inches on it. Uh, I'm going to take a pencil. Uh, I'm going to use my scoring tool and I'm just going to grab my cutting mat. Uh, I just want the cutting mat so I have something to score on so I don't make indents on my workspace. So the first thing that we're going to do is let me just bring this forward a little bit. Okay, so on the score line, so remember we scored, this is one and a half inches across and we scored at one inch. So we have one inch score line going down here. Along that score line, we are going to mark at one inch. So make sure everything is lined up. And then we're going to work, mark at one inch. And then on this side, so this is a one inch section right here, and then we have the half inch section. On the side that is the one inch section, we are going to 
place another mark two inches down. So you've got one inch on the score line and then two inches on the one inch side. So again, I'm just gonna line this up and I'm gonna put a little mark on it and we're gonna do the exact same thing on our second piece. So along our score line, we're gonna mark on the score line at one inch, make that a little bit more clear. And then on the one inch side, we're gonna mark at two, two inches. So I don't know if you can really see that, but this is what we're doing right here. So two inches, one inch on the score line. And then we're gonna score. So you can do this with like a scoreboard or whatever if you want. I just find it easier to line it up this way. So what we're gonna do is from, so from this corner right here, right here, we are gonna score diagonally to this line and down. But you're going to line this and this point up so that you get your full score line. So what I like to do <laughs> is I usually put my scoring tool at one of my points and then I make sure that my second point is sound and then I make my score. So we're just scoring just like this. And then the next thing that we're going to do is we are going to score just from this point here. So this is our one inch mark on our score line. We're going to score from this mark here to this mark here. So again, I'm just going to place my scoring tool on that point, align my ruler, and then I'm going to make sure that they line up and then I'm gonna score. So you should end up with a piece that looks like this. And then we are gonna cut that piece off. So I'm just gonna grab a pair of snips and I am going to cut that off, just like that. And you're gonna do exactly that same thing on your other piece. So I already marked it. So those are my marks, you can see those. So again, I'm going to line my points up score and then line my points up and score and you definitely want to make sure that you get a good score in that and then again we're gonna cut that piece off So you are now left with two pieces that look like this. So the first thing I'm going to do is we are going to fold on the score lines. So we're going to burnish so that you get a nice good flat piece and then so this will be the piece that goes on the left side. So it looks like this, but it's gonna go on the left side. So 
this fold goes this way and then let's open it up and we're going to fold this way and then fold this way. So here's your piece, fold, open, fold, and fold. So hopefully that makes sense. We're going to do the same thing, but on the other side. So we're going to fold. So this will go on the right side. So it looks like this. Open and fold. And then fold. So when this is attached to the right side, this here is what will be attached to the top. So now we have both sides. I'm going to grab my liquid adhesive. You can, so you can use whatever liquid adhesive works for you, or whatever adhesive in general, I guess, works for you. And I apologize if you can hear the lawnmowers in the background. They were not mowing when I sat down to do this. So we're just going to line up that tab. And if you've seen any of my videos, I'm sure you've seen me do this lots and lots of times. So this creates the component. So this could be like a whole page in an album where you're just attaching an extra flap to create it. Um, it's entirely up to you. So this will look like this. So the next thing that we're gonna do is we're gonna glue these down. So these are nine inches because this is eight inches. So you can apply this concept to any size page that you want to create. If you were doing a six by eight, your pieces would still be nine by one and a half inches because this is eight inches. If you were creating this for like an eight by six album, so like eight inches wide by six inches tall, you would make these pieces seven inches because it's whatever the length is this way, what, whatever the height, I guess, is um, of the page that you're creating, because this component will always be an open this way type of component. So whatever the, the height of your page is, in this case, it's eight inches, you would need nine inches by one and a half inches for both sides always. If you were doing a six by six component like this, then you would do seven inches, seven inches this way by one and a half inches this way. Sorry, I had to pause there for a minute because the lawnmower got really loud. All right, so we have our two pieces. Again, this piece that looks like this is going to go on the left side. And this piece, that looks like this, which is, you know, a mirror of that, is gonna go on the right. So, the way that I remember this is that when I am setting this down on this paper, the one inch side is going to be up. The half inch side is gonna be down, and the fold, <laughs> on the right is on the left, and the fold on the left is on the right. So this goes on here like this. So you have about a half an inch here, you have your, your half inch tab, and then you have this piece. So what I do when I'm going to attach it is I put the glue on my half inch piece, and then I just line it up like this. So hopefully this makes sense. So, so what I'm gonna do is I'm just going to put glue along this half inch strip. And as always, you wanna make sure that you get pretty good coverage. And that 
you don't have tons, you don't want it to ooze out. And then again, I'm going to line up this left side and this bottom with this. So along here and along the bottom. So just like this. And then I'm going to burnish the heck out of it. And you always want to make sure, especially for components like this, that you are allowing it time to dry. Bump that back a little bit so we can get this whole thing in the frame. All right, so, so far we have this. So I'm sure you can see how this is coming together. This is the part that I think a lot of people struggle with is that it kind of looks reversed or at least it did to me until I got used to it um, to how you might think it would go. So we're gonna do that same thing over on this side. So on the right side, we are gonna line, align this right side and this bottom against the right side and bottom here where the fold is going to be on your left. So hopefully this is making sense. I really, really hope it is. So again, I'm gonna put it down. I'm gonna line these up and press it down. And then burnish the heck out of it and make sure it's really, really well stuck. So the next thing that we're going to do is on the left side, we're going to push this down and then on the right side, we're going to push it down this way. So here's your little two pieces that you just attached. You're going to fold these two pieces down. So just like this, and then your two other tiny triangles are, are held down like this and these two small triangles are what you're going to attach to here. So I'm going to make sure that this is really, really, really flat and even. And then we are going to glue those two pieces down. So we're going to put glue on the little triangles. And again, you don't want to put too much on them and have it ooze out. If you put too much on and it oozes out, you could glue your whole component together and you never want that to happen. So once you have glue on those two little pieces, and again, these are nice and flat on here, we're gonna flip this down over top of them. And then, again, you're gonna burnish the heck out of it. And then you're gonna let it sit for a little bit so you can be sure that that glue is set. And then once you're sure that the glue is set, you can open it back up and now you have your component. So I'm just gonna back that up a bit more. So now you can see that we have this component. So I'm gonna grab some more black cardstock so that we can make the pieces that are gonna go on here. So because this is a bigger component, we can put slightly larger pieces on here. So we're gonna grab our trusty ruler and the key to making these the right size is that you wanna make sure that 
they are just slightly smaller in width than the width between these two components. So in this particular case, it should be around a little less than six. So five and seven eighths would probably be the most that I would do. Uh, I'm gonna make them five and three quarters just because that's an easy measurement. And then for the height, so for this side here, we are gonna wanna make them just slightly shorter than this score line here. So this, from this point to this point. So in this particular case, it should be around seven. So I'm gonna do six and three quarters just to make it easier. And you're gonna need two pieces. So two pieces of cardstock that are six and three quarters by five and three quarters. And if you were trying to conserve or whatever, you could do five and a half by six and three quarters, uh, and then you'd only use one piece. But I use all of my cardstock, so. So five and three quarters. Ooh, there's my pup there. And six and three quarters. So these will then be glued on to here. And what I typically do is I align them with the bottom, just like this. So what you can do is I just line them up like this and I just put a light little mark just slightly under it. I don't know if you can see that, but I put a little little tick right here, uh, and that allows me to know how far up to put the glue. And I'm just gonna do that on both sides. So now I'm just going to put glue right up until that line and down this hole whole piece. Again, don't put too much, don't put it too thick. And then we're just going to line this up. So there we have that piece. I'm just going to burnish it down. Make sure you let that dry. And then again, just line everything up, lay it down. Burnish, and then you have your component. Now I would let this sit because you definitely want to make sure that glue is dried on those two pieces before you you start you know really really testing this. But there you have the component, and then you can cover it in any way that you want. Um, so I would just cover here with pattern paper. I would use like a seven eighths to three, three quarters to seven eighths um, by, you know, seven and three quarter, seven and seven eighths for along here. Um, I don't always cover the back side of these because you don't really necessarily see them when the component is open. Um, so I would cover these two pieces here. You could do patterned paper or you could do photo mats or you could do a couple of photo mats on each one. 
So really the sky is the limit. Um, because these were six and three quarters by five and three quarters, I would cut my pattern paper probably to six and a half by five and a half. Uh, and then this section here was about five and three quarters by seven and three quarters. Uh, and then here, this piece here would be if you were using a full sheet of, you know, eight by eight paper pattern paper, um, I, I would cut it to three and, or, I would cut it to seven and three quarters by seven and three quarters. And then you can just lay it on top and mark the area. So like, we're gonna pretend this is the piece of pattern paper that I have cut to go on here. So pretending like that's it, I would just take my pencil and I would just lightly mark those spots. I don't know if you can really see what I did there, but I would just lightly mark those spots so I'd know where to just trim off those little corners. And then if you were going to do a closure, you have a few different options for closures. So I'm not really going to go into that, but that is how you build that component. So my previous video, uh, I think I think I showed you how to make, I think it was a six by six. So this is an eight by eight. Uh, and let's quickly, very quickly, go through a 10 by 10, because this was actually a size that was requested. So I have cut already the component pieces for this. So I have one piece that is cut to 10 by 10, one piece that is 10 by 10 and a half. And then I have these two like side components and these are 11 by one and a half. And again, I have two of those. So I'm gonna grab my scoreboard. And on the piece that is, so this is 10, by 10 and a half. So with the 10 and a half side along the top of my scoreboard, I am going to score at the 10 inch mark. Set that aside for a minute. Fold and burnish. And we'll just go right ahead and glue that. I don't think I've ever made one quite this big. <laughs> so we'll see how it goes. So this is the first part of our component. Set that aside. Grab our scoreboard again. And then we're gonna grab these two pieces. So again, 11 inches by one and a half inches. We are going to put it so the one and a half inch side is along the top and we're going to score all the way down at the one inch mark. And again, because these are bigger components, I'm using 110 pound cardstock for these. We're doing the same thing on both. Then I'm going to put this to the side. And I am going to grab my cutting mat just so that I can use it for scoring. I'm gonna grab my pencil and along the score line, I am going to mark it at one inch. And then on this side, so where it's one inch wide, if I can zoom in a little bit for you guys on this. So one inch and two inches. And we're gonna do the same thing on the other one. I'm just gonna do it opposite. It doesn't really matter which way you do it as long as your folds are correct. So one inch and then 
two inches. So I now have my marks. I'm going to grab my little scoring tool, my ruler, and I am going to oops, find my mark here at the one inch on my score line. And I'm going to line the ruler up diagonally right to this corner. And then I am going to score just like that. Then I'm going to turn it around a little bit and I'm going to find my two inch mark. And I'm going to score from that two inch mark to the one inch mark. So you want to make sure you have those lined up. Oops. And you're going to do that for both of your pieces. So now we should have two pieces that look like this. And we, again, are going to cut off these pieces here. Oops. So, you can see that. So I'm just going to grab my snips. I'm going to do that again. both sides. Put this to the side. All right, I'm going to zoom back out a little bit. These are bigger pieces. So this piece here will be our left piece. So we are going to fold the score line this way. And again, always make sure that you're burnishing because you want your components to lie as flat as possible. And then we're going to open it up and we're going to fold this way. So just like this. And then we're going to fold this way. So there's the left component. This will be the right component. So this is what the right one will look like. So we are going to fold this way. So it looks like this. Okay, and then we're gonna open it up and we're gonna fold this way. Making sure you get a nice, even, flat fold. And then we're gonna fold the small one this way. So now we have our right side component. So we're gonna grab our 10 by 10 piece here now, and we are gonna glue these in. So again, left, right. So this is gonna go like this. And this is going to go like this, so that when this is folded down, it lines up in the corners and along the side. And then this fold mark on the on that should line up with the score line for between the two pages. And if ever they don't line up completely, you can always just trim your bottom a little bit. So like down here, if this, if the point on this doesn't match up with the score line here where the page folds down, just trim a little bit off the bottom. 
You don't have to trim a lot. It, it, it could be off sometimes by like a sixteenth of an inch, um, which would stick out here if you're lining everything up else up correctly. No big deal, just trim a little bit off your bottom. So I'm gonna glue my left piece on first. So again, this is my left piece, if this makes sense. And I'm just going to apply glue on that half inch piece. I'm going to line this up with that corner and that side. And then I'm just going to press everything down. And again, burnish, burnish, burnish. Make sure that's really well stuck. And then, so this, I'm going to fold this back over this way. Fold and fold. We're going to do our right side. So our right side is going to go like this. So I'm going to put glue along that half inch side. And then we're again, we're going to line these up. Best you can. Keep everything as aligned as possible. Burnish that down. Opening it up, pushing. So now if you can see that. We have these little small triangle tabs on top. So again, you want to make sure that these are as even as possible. And then you're going to put glue just on the little, t the little triangles. And again, you want to be careful. Now, for something this size, you may want to readjust these for something that they're a little bit bigger, but then you would lose more space. So, we're going to we're going to go with this size. Flip this over and push it down. And I'm going to burnish the heck out of it, and then I'm going to let it sit for a few minutes just because I want to make sure that that gets really, really dry before I open it up. But this is all that you really need to do. So the components themselves, the side components that we made, they were exactly the same as the 8x8. They're exactly the same as a six by six. It doesn't matter what size you choose, as long as you make the, the component long enough to fit on here. So it's always whatever the length of your page is, plus one inch, always. So there we have that component. It does work. And that's all there is to it. it it's relatively straightforward. Uh, I know it can get a little complicated with this part, but hopefully I have explained it and shown it better than I did in my first video. Um, please let me know in the comments if you have any further questions or issues. Uh, I do have my email address is listed on my channel. So if you want to contact me directly with specific questions, please feel free to do so. So you can also DM me uh, in Instagram. I'm on Instagram. Um, I will get the notifications. 
I am better about keeping on top of those generally, so there are those options for asking questions as well. Um, that that makes it easier for me to respond directly to you as well rather than generalized on a comments platform on YouTube. So uh, I hope you guys enjoyed today's tutorial. I am not set back up yet in my craft room. Um, that's why I opted to do something easy like this because I'm getting there guys. I promise I am and I should be back soon um, with, you know, a more standardized, shall we say, schedule, um, or an actual schedule. Let's go with that, an actual schedule. Um, I ran into a few problems in demoing my craft space before being able to do anything in it. I ended up having to rip out a lot more than I had anticipated, including the floor. <laughs> So that was fun. Uh, so hopefully I will be back in a more scheduled manner um, very soon. So I hope you guys enjoyed today's tutorial. And as always, if you are interested in seeing more, please don't forget to like and subscribe. Thanks, everyone.